Hello, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Susan, and I'd like to spend the next few minutes talking with you about strategies that I hope you'll find helpful as you seek research funding throughout your scientific career. I've been a faculty member at Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, Texas since 1991. In 2001, I also founded a company, Bioscience Writers, with the goal of helping scientists around the world be successful in their manuscript submissions and grant writing efforts. As a scientist myself, I've been fortunate to be funded mostly by the NIH, but other agencies as well. In my scientific career, I've written my own grants, mentored and advised others in the grant writing process, and reviewed many different types of grants for the NIH and other agencies. These experiences have taught me that although funding is tight at the moment, people do get funded. The key question is, how are they doing it? First of all, funding opportunities do exist, but we need to be creative in the way that we seek funding. Most commonly, when we want to get grant funding, our first thought is the NIH, NSF, or other large federal funding agency. While government agencies are fabulous places to look for funding, as they consistently fund the majority of research in the U.S., other groups also fund research, including state and international agencies, which might be a great fit for your research area. Certain scientific organizations also provide research funding that's often reserved for junior investigators, which is a really great way to get your career started. I got my first faculty grant from the American Cancer Society. You may also identify local organizations or industry opportunities that are particularly interested in your research. So be broad in your thinking and consider a variety of places that may be a good fit for your funding. Although there's many sources of research funding, you will need a plan to get successfully funded. It requires long-term strategic planning and preparation to be prepared and competitive for grants that you may decide to apply for. The first rule is to take the plunge and actually apply. I know it sounds obvious, but the mere fact of applying and reapplying greatly increases your chances of funding. So apply frequently and many to many agencies and stagger your submissions to increase your chances. Make sure that every application you put in is the best proposal you possibly can. You want a reputation of submitting clean, compelling proposals, not sloppy ones that rarely get funded anyway. Of course, you need a very strong scientific foundation and hypothesis, but you need an exceptionally well-prepared and high-impact application to be successful in your funding. Focus on preparing really top-notch applications and make sure your application aligns well with the goals of the funding agency that you're submitting to. You need to understand their goals and make sure their goals match your goals. In this ideal situation, you'll be able to write about what you want and do and they'll be excited about it. If the goals don't align with those of the funding agency, you won't be very successful. Throughout the course of your career, you will need to establish a plan to help you strategically reach your funding goals. Here we see a hypothetical timeline of a graduate student training that merges into postdoctoral training and then into a faculty career. Successful faculty grant funding starts long before you ever become a faculty member. Graduate students should look for opportunities to apply for various types of funding. A common opportunity might be to apply for travel grants to go to a meeting. Even if your advisor has the funds to send you to the meeting, take time and apply for the travel grant. This shows initiative and begins to build your funding portfolio. When I was a grad student, I got a Sigma Xi grant in aid of research. The money was small, but I learned a lot in the course of writing that proposal and it set me apart from other students. Most importantly though, it gave me the confidence that I could be successful in grant competitions, and it encouraged me to pursue a career in academics. You can list each of your grant awards on your CV, your resume, or your NIH bio sketch, and the reviewers of your next proposal will recognize these successes. Somewhere in the mid to later stages of your graduate student training, or earlier stages of your postdoc training, you may want to apply for a training fellowship. You'll be most competitive for these kinds of fellowships if you've already started to build your scientific credibility, such as previous awards or funding, as well as papers that you've published and meeting presentations that you've given. By going to scientific meetings and meeting people in your scientific field, you will be building your professional network. 
The people in your network may someday become your collaborators or may review your grant application. They may have met you and talked to you about your work and they're excited about your work and see that you're excited about your work. All these things will only help if they happen to be reviewing your grant. At later stages of your postdoc or earlier stages of a faculty position, you can consider applying for internal pilot money, which is funding that's often offered by institutions to support investigators who don't have very much preliminary data, but the institution feels that they have a very compelling idea that they want to support. Pilot funding is usually only enough to help you buy some reagents and supplies to get your project going and generate some preliminary data. The idea is that with this preliminary data in hand, you'll be able to leverage your ideas into additional larger funding, such as a junior investigator award. These types of grants may be available from federal agencies or other sources, and they aim to provide young investigators who may have less experience and perhaps minimal amounts of preliminary data with enough money to move their project forward. You may be able to skip the junior investigator funding altogether and move directly into a sustainable, external, independent investigator grant. These are the types of grants that are renewable and can continue throughout your career to help you fund your research. In the NIH world, these grants include R01 and R21 grants. Following this model, each thing that you do at different stages of your career will build your scientific credibility, your confidence, and your skills increasing your ability to apply and achieve the funding that you want and need for the rest of your career. At the core though, all this strategy depends on the fact that you have a very strong competitive scientific idea that you're proposing to develop. Taken together, the science combined with the strategy combined with the presentation will help you build a fundable grant proposal. So we just talked about fellowships and research grants, so I want to take a moment to comment on some of the differences between training fellowships, which you might apply for at the earlier stages of your career, and research grants that typically will fund you toward the later stages of your career. The big difference between these two grant types is that training fellowships are meant to train you. They do have an essential research component where you need to explain your project, how you will approach it, and why it's exciting and significant. But these grants also have a very large training component where you need to describe how you will be trained, what new opportunities you will have to learn as part of your fellowship, the people who will mentor you, how you will grow in years one, two, and three of your fellowship into a stronger and more versatile scientist based on the particular training opportunities available in your environment. These elements need to be very clearly elaborated when you write your training fellowship. Research grants, on the other hand, have a much different focus, almost exclusively on the science, the investigator, the significance of the problem being addressed, and innovative aspects of the proposal. You need to recognize the different goals of these grant types and write them accordingly in order to be successful with either one of them. To be successful with either training fellowships or research grants, you will need good planning and time management skills. Grant proposals require a lot of time to develop. It's not just the science sections, which are shown here in orange. In the NIH world, the science sections are known as the research strategy sections, and they're typically between 6 and 12 pages long. However, Grant proposals also include all of the other sections that are listed here in black text. Some of these sections are short, only a half a page or less, but some of them extend into multiple pages and many of them will require that you discuss issues with other people and get additional information. You will spend a lot of time writing these other sections. If you're writing a training fellowship, additional sections shown in the orange box are required and in these sections, you will explain how you will be trained, which, as I mentioned before, is critical to the success of your training fellowship application. Your mentor will need to write a letter, and if you have other mentors, letter from the mentoring team will be needed. In addition to your research plan, you need to describe your training activities. This could include classes, meetings you would attend, collaborations, etc. You'll also describe your career goals, your background, 
and how your career goals mesh with your background. My goal in showing this list is to again remind you that there are many sections and they need to be carefully written and well integrated. And you need to have time to make that happen, especially getting other people to do their sections. My advice here, start early. Communication is an essential part of good grantsmanship. Your success will depend on your ability to communicate your ideas to only two or three reviewers. So the more you know about your reviewers, the better off you'll be. You need to understand what the agency wants to fund, what the reviewers will be scoring you on, what the reviewers are likely to already know, and what they don't know. How can you explain things to them so that they will be as excited about the work as you are? Your grant needs to be very tight. I mean cohesive, clear, coordination of the sections. The research plan should have continuity and flow between the different aims, typically with two to four different independent aims. You want to write with clarity and brevity. This means use shorter words, shorter sentences, and paragraphs and write in first person with active voice, which will make your grant more lively and interesting to read. Remember to explain what you're thinking. Don't just say that this is the outcome I expect without explaining why. The reviewers may not follow your logic and therefore may not come to the same conclusion that you have. If you explain your reasoning for this outcome, the reviewer will better understand your rationale and there's a greater chance that they might actually agree with you. My last point is to remind you to write with confidence and enthusiasm about the ideas you're presenting. It's unlikely your reviewer will be more enthusiastic than you are. Aim for that sort of excitement and positive thinking while still acknowledging potential problems, which exist in every grant proposal. Explain your alternative approaches and outcomes. Make it clear that you've thought deeply about the problem and your plan to address it, and that you understand the potential roadblocks you may encounter. The significant outcomes that could develop from your work can produce a very compelling grant and hopefully will be very well received by your reviewers. I hope this quick overview of a few key ideas will help you move forward in your career and start writing grant applications. Good luck with your proposals. At Bioscience Writers, we understand that your ability to communicate your science effectively in a written format is essential for your career success. Our mission is to solve these competitive and high-impact challenges by providing you with the highest quality scientific publication, grant writing, and communication solutions, with an emphasis on an exceptional customer experience. Please contact us and let us develop a solution for you.